Welcome to Excel Tips and Techniques. This is my favorite topic to teach because I can teach all sorts of things that will be time-saving. However, it's you can pick anything in Excel and say that it's time-saving. So just want to let you know I got a little carried away in my book. It's probably longer than what we're going to be able to cover. But if you have a chance to read over some of the things that we haven't gone over, I think every single tip will save you a lot of time. Some of the tips you'll probably already know and you'll think that they're basic and some you won't, but in my opinion, if you just get a, few, a handful of tips that will save you time, you're better off. So we're going to start with this screen uh, that I have some information on. And what I see a lot of people do when I go out uh, and do some one-on-one -on -one support is I see people trying to select a range by dragging, which is a great way to go. You just drag down that ah, if you're... You just drag down across whatever cells you want. The problem comes in when you start going down beyond a screen, people just keep going up and down and miss their mark. And in the end, they might not even be at the place they want. And it's just very um, stressful to try and find the end of where you want to be. So rather than doing that, another way of selecting, let's say, notice I'm off by one here. I'd like to maybe end here. Instead of starting the whole process over, which I see a lot of people do, as long as you have your shift key down when you click, you can change your mind as often as you'd like. Now, if you take away the shift key, then it's going to take away your entire highlighting. But just know that you can also just click at the starting point and then go to the scroll bar, scroll, scroll fully down to wherever you'd like to end, and shift click. So clicking and shift clicking is a great way to highlight everything in between, okay? So you want to click on one end, shift click on the other. Then if you'd like to highlight something that isn't next to your original selection, you can hold your control click, your control key down and start dragging across any other ranges. So clicking, shift clicking, and control dragging across ranges are great ways to select. Okay, um, one of the nice things about selecting, I don't know if you've ever uh, tried to enter things across a row rather than down a column, but as you know, generally speaking, when you type something in and you press enter, it goes down the column, and in order to go across, you'd have to press tab, and some people don't enter as quickly by pressing tab, so the nice thing is, if you uh, select the area that you want to enter in prior to, I'm having trouble with my mouse here, it keeps wanting to enter, there we go, ah, this is not, this is interesting, sorry, Just trying to drag, here we go, as I type, if I type something like January, and then want to go to the next cell, if I press enter, notice that it is only going to those cells that are highlighted. And if I want to go back, I can press Shift-Enter. It's also great if you're going to highlight a larger range. So if I want to highlight, let's say, from here through here, I will go down one column. And instead of having to reposition when I go to the next column, at this point, I can just press Enter. So it's a really nice way to enter data quickly. And that's what's on the first and second page of the handout if you have that. Okay. When you are entering data, sometimes you want to fill the same data to the right. So let's say that I've got um, some data in this first column, and I'd like my second column to have that same data. If you hi I'm having a lot of trouble with my mouse here today. Um, if you highlight that second row and just press Control-R, Control-R will take everything that you – it basically says copyright. And it takes whatever you have in the column just to the left and copies it right. You have that same kind of thing um, instead of Control-R. If you want to copy down, you can just highlight and do a Control-D for down. Okay? Assuming you can get your mouse to work here. There we go. And if you want to go down many uh, rows, you can highlight your data I don't know what my problem is, but I'm just going to shift click and press control D and it will go down as many rows as you'd like. So these are some data entry kinds of things. There are other data entry kinds of things that you might like as well. 
I'm going to go to a different sheet. And while we're talking about going to a different sheet, in the lower left-hand corner, notice you have a left arrow and a right arrow. Depending on what version of Excel you have, Excel 2016, which is what we're using now, did away with, I don't know if you remember, but there used to be an arrow to the left of that one that had a line on it, which allows you to go to the very first uh, worksheet. I have lots of worksheets in this workbook, and every time I click on this, it only goes back one worksheet at a time. Every time I click on this, it only goes forward one worksheet at a time. So what if I want to go to my very first worksheet or my very last worksheet? Well, if you hold your control key down when you click on the left arrow, it goes to the very first worksheet. And if you hold your control key down when you're clicking on the right arrow, it goes to your last sheet. So that brings you to your sheets much more quickly. In addition, one of the things I didn't know till years and years after I taught Excel, and I was actually taught by one of my students, is if you look at how many worksheets I have here, I have a ton of worksheets. And it is not much fun to scroll between all those sheets. So as I point to these arrows, notice it's even telling me um, that if I right click, I can see all the sheets in my workbook. That has saved me so much time over the years to just right click and then I see all the different sheets and I can either click on the sheet I want and click on OK, or double click on the sheet and it takes me right to where I want to go. OK? So now let's say I've got a sheet like this and I would like to, in all of these cells, I, and I'm just control clicking on all the different cells that I'd like, OK? In all of those cells, I would like to enter the number 5,000. What most people would do is they would enter that number in each of those cells, or they would enter it in one cell and perhaps copy and paste them into the other cells. A much faster way to enter data in lots of different cells is to highlight the, the cells like I just did. So I just control click on all the cells that I wanted, type in the number, which I said I wanted 5,000, and here's where you want to not press enter, because enter will only enter it into that first cell. So if you want to have, excuse me, in this case, it's the last cell. It's the, what, the very last one I highlighted, which is here. But what I want to do now is press control enter. By holding the control key down when you press enter, notice that I've entered it in every single one of these cells. That will save you a ton of time. So if I want to enter the number, let's say, 50 in all of these cells, I just highlight all of those cells, type in 50, press Control Enter, and I'm done. What if the number that you would like to enter in all those cells is already in one of the cells? Let's go ahead and highlight a bunch of cells. What you want to make sure of for this technique is that the cell that's active, and you know the cell that's active because notice how all these other ones are gray. This one's white. Not only that, but notice I'm in L6, and notice my um, name box over here is saying L6. So there's lots of ways of you being able to tell that this is the currently active cell. You want the currently active cell to be the number that you, or could be number, it could be text, that you'd like to copy to all the other cells. Now. If you'd like to copy these to all the other cells, what you need to do is be editing that cell. The F2 key, the function 2 key, up at the top of your keyboard, if you press F2, notice that my cursor is now blinking inside that cell, which means it's the currently active cell. So at this point, if I press Control Enter, like I just taught you a second ago, Control Enter, copy. Then if I press Control Enter at this point, notice that all of those cells became 10,900 immediately. How cool is that to be able to enter data that quickly? Okay, so if I wanted the word total here and I wanted the word total here, again, all I have to do is highlight both areas by control clicking. Okay, type in the word total one time and then what do I press? I press control enter. Really a great 
technique for entering data. Okay, so that's on page three in your handout. Um, now, what if I want to copy a value from the formula above? So here I've got a formula, right? Equals sum, and it's adding basically these three cells. How do I know where those three cells are? Well, if I just double click on this, notice that when I double click on the formula, it actually highlights all the numbers that are in that formula, which is very helpful to see if you've got things going correctly. But on page four, it says, I would like to copy a value. So to do that, I just need to hold down my control key and the, um, and then press the quotes. Now quotes is at the top of a key. So I do have to hold control shift and then the quote key. And notice that it is not the formula that got copied down, but rather the result of the formula. So it's the same as if you guys are aware of the uh, ability to copy and paste values, that's what you've just done. You've pasted the value. Now, why would you want to paste the value? Well, you may want to copy it to some other spreadsheet or something that you don't want to copy the rest of the data, in which case, if you don't copy the data with the formula, then it's going to just show up as blank in the new sheet. So copy, pasting a value is often really helpful. So that's what I just did, and you can tell it's the value because it says 10,200 up here. Okay? So that's a quick shortcut key for bringing down values from the row above. Okay? Another thing, if you often type in date, the date or the time, it's really helpful to be able to do that quickly. So a shortcut key for doing that is the control key and the uh, semicolon key. So, oh, excuse me, the colon key. No, semicolon, I was right the first time. So control and semicolon on your keyboard puts in the date, okay? And then if you'd like the time, that would be the colon key. So for that, you would just hit control and then shift because they're on the same key, control, shift, and colon, and that gives you the time. So those are quick time entry keystrokes, and they're all in your handout, so you don't have to remember any of these or write any of them down. The next tip that's kind of fun is notice this grand total. Now, what I see a lot of people do to get a grand total, grand total meaning I would like to add this, plus this, plus this. So what I see people doing a lot is they'll click in that cell, and they'll type it in equals, then they'll click on this cell, and hold their control key down, click on that cell, and click on that cell. And, whoa, excuse me. Um, let's, first you'd have to do an equal sum to do that, or you'd have to do equals, click on this cell, then do a plus and click on that cell. Either way uh, would work, but that's still a lot of time, right? Especially if you had 100 of these to, to add. Instead of doing this plus this plus this, let's say, and pressing enter, which works just fine, right? Instead of doing that, what you could do is just highlight from the top of your range down, down through this extra row, which is where you'd like to have your total. So, okay, let's go back to the top of my range and down through, so I'm clicking and shift clicking, okay? So all my data is highlighted and this extra row where I'd like my total to be is highlighted. And all I need to do then is click on the auto sum tool and boom, let's see what it did. Look at that, it says equal sum, B23 plus B16 plus B9. So instead of doing all that clicking, in two seconds, I got my grand total. And that's on page five in your handout. All right. Have you ever had to enter a bunch of data from a worksheet or, you know, just a, a paper copy? If you have, what happens to me, I don't know about you, but I question to make sure, did I type the right thing in? 
So I would type in, let's say, 1500, press enter. I'd be looking at my sheet of paper. Then I would look back at my screen to make sure it truly was, uh-oh, hang on. Um, Brian? <laughs> Are What's you up? Guys still, um, I see Control-Alt-Delete on the other screen. Um, it's fine. Just move the mouse. We see it. Yeah, but it's, I won't see it, but that's okay. I'll look at my screen. Um, okay. So, um. We, we see everything just fine. Okay. They don't. All right. Sounds great. So, what I'm trying to say here is that I would look at my computer, then I would look at my sheet of paper, then I would look back at my computer to make sure that every time I entered something, it would be correct. Which is, slows down the process of entering data significantly. So there is a tool that a lot of people don't know about called Seek Cells on Enter. And I, that tool can be put on your Quick Access Toolbar. So if it's not already, all of you, this is your Quick Access Toolbar. I don't know if you used it before or not, but it's the most spectacular thing that you can do as far as time saving, and we will be going over that. But let's go ahead and right click on our Quick Access Toolbar. And notice that it lets me customize my Quick Access Toolbar. And I'm going to see that if I look down here, I'm not seeing Speak Self on Enter. Oh, yes, I am. It's at the very bottom, so it was off the side of the screen, right here. If you are not seeing it, which you probably aren't because you may not have even known it was there, all you have to do is go from Popular Commands to All Commands. That will show you a list of all commands in Excel. Click on anything on the list and type in an S. Now, don't then type in a P to go down to the P's because it, that's what it will do. It will go to the P's. It won't go to the S P's. So once you get to the S's, you're going to scroll down until you see Seek Self on Enter. And right here, it says Speak Self on Enter right here. So you would just double click to put it over here on your toolbar. Now, if you just double click on it, it's going to go, let me take it off by double clicking. If I only double click on it, it's going to go to the very bottom of my toolbar, uh, my quick access toolbar. If you want to move it up, you'll have to hit your up arrow a bunch of times to wherever you'd like it. Another time saving tip, instead of doing that, is to click wherever you'd like it on the toolbar first. Let's say I'd like it here. Then double click on speak cells on enter. And notice that it puts it right below whichever thing I've clicked on. So I put it right below Select Visible. So I'm going to click on OK. So now I see it right here on my toolbar. And watch what happens. I'm going to try, I'm going to hope that you're going to be able to hear it. I'm going to turn my speaker system up. Look what happens. Cells on Enter. Cells will now 500. With having that verbal verification, I can just quickly type in numbers without ever having to look at that sheet of paper. Okay? Uh, excuse me, without ever having to look back at my computer. Of course, you'd have to look at the sheet of paper. To turn Speak Cells on Enter off, I can. Will now be spoken on enter. Uh, off, speak on enter. I would just click it again and notice it turned it off so that now as I type it, it's no longer on. And that's on page six. A new feature, if you are on 2016, is up here. It's called Tell Me What You Want to Do. I don't know if you've used Help in the past, but Help, all it ever did was it took you to an explanation of how to do something, which was nice, but it would tell you what ribbon, you know, which ribbon to go, uh, which tab on the ribbon to go to and which tool to use and that sort of thing. But what if you would like the help function to do it for you? For instance, let's say I'd like to put a comment on this cell, but I don't know how. I click on the cell that I'd like to put the comment on, and in Tell Me What You Want to Do, I click there, and I type in, start typing in the word comment. Notice when I type in the word comment, 
it says, would you like to insert a comment? So instead of having to find where it is and all of that, all I have to do is click on insert comments, and right then and there, it's done it for me. And I can type in whatever I'd like. So it's a sort of a mega help on steroids in that it actually does the function for you if you'd like it to. Okay? Now, if I click back in here, notice that insert comment is up at the top because it, you recently used it and it thinks, hey, maybe you want to use it again. So it'll show you the recently uh, used function, and then it will also give you other things that if you'd like to try, you can try something different. Let's say that you'd like to do something like sum and you don't know how to do that, or summarize with a pivot table, all of those things. If it can do something for you, it will. If not, or if you'd like to know how to do it, you want to go back to that old style help, it always has that capability as well. Okay? Now, Get Help shows you help that's within Excel, and Smart Lookup on some is something also new that it's actually going to go to Bing, the search engine, sort of like Google, but it's Microsoft search engine, and actually look that up and open up a pane on the side of the screen to give you any information that it finds on the internet. Okay? All right. Any questions? Notice that I've got my comments in there now. And that's tell me what you want to do. Another thing that uh, was new a couple of releases ago, which I really like, is in the formula bar, if you had a huge amount of text, or you had a huge uh, formula, you would have to um, scroll down, or if you click in it, it would actually cover your the rest of your sheet. Do you remember that? You click in this, it would expand and cover your sheet. Now, what you can do is notice that if I point to the bottom of this formula bar, I can actually, I should be able to drag it down, but I'm, there we go. I can drag it down as far as I want, and instead of it covering any part of my spreadsheet, it just moves my spreadsheet down. That is so handy to be able to see a lot of text or a large formula, as opposed to either scrolling down or having it cover your sheet. Okay, so that's right here at the bottom of your formula bar. The next thing we're, we've got is the Quick Access Toolbar. This is the Quick Access Toolbar that I was talking to you about before. And I wanted to go over, well, I already kind of showed you how to add things to the Quick Access Toolbar. Another way of adding things to the Quick Access Toolbar is simply right-clicking on the item that you want to add. For instance, if I wanted to add bolding to the Quick Access Toolbar, I could right-click on bold and click on Add to the Quick Access Toolbar. And unfortunately, you can't, I have so many things on here, you can't see the end of mine, so I'm going to click at the end. And notice there's a bold right at the end of my Quick Access Toolbar. If you don't want that on there, I can right click and I can remove it from the Quick Access Toolbar. That easy to add things and to remove things. If you want to change the order of things though, you will have to right click and go down to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. I don't know why it's not saying I can. Um, and customize the Quick Access Toolbar, and then uh, customize it the way that I showed you earlier. I'm not sure why it's not saying that I can customize it. Still not saying I can customize it. I don't know what, what just happened, because we were able to customize it just two seconds ago. Um, but let's go over some of the things that I have for the Quick Access Toolbar, because all, remember, all we have to do is right-click and customize to add things to the Quick Access Toolbar. Uh, so I'm going to start with some of these items that I really like. So first of all, there's open and new and save. Those are things that if you do them a lot, you have to go to file and then open or file and save or file and print take way too long. So those are ones that I would definitely put on there and save as. Save as is really nice. Notice though that this is a save as with a down arrow. What's nice about that, there's different save as's that you'll see when you bring it in, uh, when you go to the, to add it, but this one allows you to save as a different format. So you could save as a PDF if you want. Or if you have an old workbook, if you save as workbook, it will upgrade it to the 
version that you've got currently. So let's say you're opening up a 2013 workbook, you'd like it to be 2016, you could do a save as workbook and it would save it as a 2016 workbook. Next, I have send uh, as email. So if I have something on my screen that I would like to send to you, I could click on this and it would immediately open up uh, Outlook and put this in as an email attachment rather than having to save it, go to Outlook and try and find it. This is the same kind of tool, except it's going to take this entire workbook immediately on the fly, convert it to a PDF and send it, which is also very handy. And all of those things you can find to add to your quick access toolbar. This is closing the workbook, undo and redo. This is freezing pain. I don't know if you've used freeze panes in the past, but that's very handy. Let me show you why you'd like to have freeze panes. Let me go to my freeze panes sheet. What freeze panes allows you to do, notice that right up here I've got my titles. As I scroll down, notice that how they go off the top of the screen, which is annoying when you don't know what is in each column. So if I just click on the cell that I, uh, cell below, the cell that I'd like to have frozen, so if I want to freeze this row up here, I click on the cell A4, come up here now, and say freeze pane, and notice that as I scroll down, it no longer goes off the top of the page, which is really nice. There's also the same thing for freezing panes for going right and left. Let's say I start scrolling to the right, and I'd like to always have my date and my account name on the screen. Well, instead then of being in this cell, if I am in this cell, it will freeze everything to the left and above the cell that I've selected. So by selecting this cell, it will make sure that this doesn't go off the screen and also these two columns. So I come back up here. And I first need to unfreeze the panes, and then I come up and freeze them. Now, as I scroll down, those top, the top row stays, and as I scroll right, the date and the account name stay on the screen. Okay? I'm going to unfreeze those panes again. And I'm going to go back to the left to my navigation. Have you ever wanted to select a contiguous range. I want to select this whole range here. This is the select the current region tool. And what it does is it selects everything until it hits a blank row or a blank column. It's such a nice tool to have if you want to do anything with your current range. For instance, let's say that I didn't have these Let's say I did not have these formatted. I'm going to go ahead and take away the formatting. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say clear format. So now I've got this range up here and I'd love to see these be formatted the same as this. So I click anywhere in this range and select, excuse me, select um, my current range, which I've done. And all of you probably already know about the Format Painter, which allows you to copy formatting. It doesn't copy the data, but it copies the formatting. So I'm going to click on the Format Painter, and then just click in this top left cell, and it just copied the formatting. Now, I need to also copy the formatting down here. So instead of just clicking once on the paintbrush, I'm going to click twice. So that's going to, let me do that again here. I'm going to double click. I'm going to click once here now and once here. How much faster is that to format your data than doing everything a, another time? Now, notice my format painter is still ready to paint, so I'm going to click it again to take it off. But that's what this does is selects the current region. A keystroke way of selecting the current region is pressing Control A. You click in the region, press Control A, and that will select current region as well. You already know about the speak cells on enter, which was neat. 
Another one I have is called Clipboard. Clipboard opens up this area on the side that allows you to copy up to 24 different items at the same time. So if you have a large spreadsheet and you would like to copy this first row, okay, so I highlight the first row once I've got this visible and do a copy and then I'd like to copy this area. So I hit copy again. Notice that it gives you little snippets over here. So I can go anywhere now I want in my sheet and click on this first one, click on this second one, and I can do it as many times as I want because it'll stay there. Even when I exit Excel, it'll stay there till the end of the day or until I sign off is what I should say. So can I only use this in Excel? No. If I go to any other program, let's say I go to Outlook and go to a new email, notice I've got my clipboard right here. To display the clipboard, all I have to do is click on the little clipboard tool and now come into my text area, click to get the title, click to get the rest. Now the formatting got a little messy on this one, but how cool is that that you can go from any program to any program using the clipboard function. Again, it holds 24 different items, so you can copy a lot. Otherwise, you can only really copy one thing at a time in Excel, right, and in Word. And it's that same clipboard is in Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, all of the different applications. Okay, so that that's this one. The next one is Paste Special. A lot of people don't know about Paste Special, and it has some cool things. Let me show you a couple of them. Have you ever wanted to take these numbers, and let's say next year these are going to double, okay? If I just type in the, uh, the number two in here, normally what you would have to do is you would maybe do a formula that says equals two times this, and then drag it across, and then you'd have to have your whole area over here that has the correct information, delete all of this. You don't have to do that. If I just type in a two here and do a copy, and then select whatever it is I would like to double. Now, I don't want to double the totals. That'll happen naturally because those are formulas. I just want to select the data. And I go back to my paste special tool. Notice all these amazing things in Paste Special. One of them says multiply. Simply by copying whatever number you want to multiply by, selecting where you'd like to sort of paste that multiplication, and clicking OK, everything here just doubles in place without you having to do a formula, do a paste special, all of that stuff, okay? And then I'll just delete my, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Delete my number two, and I'm ready to go. So did you see what I did? So realistically, instead of doubling, you may only have, let's say, 20% increase. So you could do a point two or something like that. that um, you would want to multiply by 1.2 because you'd want the number plus an extra 20%. But that's a, that's a really neat feature is this, um, being able to paste special and multiply or add. You saw there was add, divide, all that. Another very cool feature with that paste special, I think, is sometimes you get this information and you have it, here we have the months going across the top and the items going down the side. There are times that you want the exact reverse. And in order to make that happen, to have the months go down the left and these go across the top, you would have to type every single thing in the entire table again, taking you a ton of time. Instead, you could select the current region and do a copy, then position your cursor wherever you'd like it to go, go back to Paste Special, and go to Transpose, Click on OK, and boom, you've just made every heading go across the top and down the left-hand side in two seconds. Now, true, you may have to change some of the formatting, but
but that is a lot faster than retyping every single number. Okay? So that's transpose and that's under paste special. So paste special is a, a really nice tool. Paste values. We talked about paste values a little bit earlier. What they do is they take formulas. Notice that this is a formula here. So if I take this formula and I copy it, and then let's say I go to a new sheet. Let's add a new sheet here. Click on the plus and paste it. Notice it's giving me all zeros, which we talked about earlier, because the data didn't come with it, and it's not able to add the data from the other sheet. Okay? So instead, if I go back here, and instead of pasting, um, excuse me, instead of pasting, just pasting, what I'm going to do is go back to my new sheet, and I'm going to paste values, which is this one here. And notice that it, instead of doing the formula, which gave me nothing, it actually put in the values, okay, of those formulas. The next thing, have, excuse me, have you ever gotten a sheet from somebody else and or even your own sheet and wondered, are the formulas correct? How do I see the formulas? Normally, in order to see the formulas, you have to click on every cell and then you have to look up here and it's hard to see if there's any mistakes. So this next one is called show formulas. Notice there's a quick keystroke for it, which is control and tilde, okay? So I can either use that or I can use control and tilde, which is in the top left-hand corner of my keyboard, and it will switch back and forth between showing me my formulas so I can quickly see if they're correct versus showing me the results of the formulas, okay? So these are some of the things that I think are really nice to have on your Quick Access Toolbar. There's more of them, but I've got every single one of them put on page 13 in your handout. Okay? Any questions on any of those before I continue? Okay. All right. Another thing that I like is page layout view, which is down here on, notice this is normal view, which is where you're going to be most of the time. The page layout view is right to the right of that on the status bar. The reason I like that, this view, is mostly just for putting in headers and footers. It's really cool to be able to just come here, click to add whatever header I want, like NJP or NTAP or whatever it is I want. You can enter it right into your screen and see what it looks like. Okay? So page layout view and the ability to enter headers and footers and that sort of thing right in your screen versus before having to go to insert header or going to the page layout screen is really nice. I, excuse, uh, the page setup screen. Um, screen capture. A lot of times people want to move or copy data from Excel into Word or into Outlook and they don't like the look of the formatting when it gets there. One way to make sure you get the formatting exactly the way you want it is to go to whatever program you want, like make sure you're in the screen that you want to copy first, then go to a program like Outlook, and if you want to create a new email, let's say, go to that email. Let me go back to my screen. It has to be the last screen I saw. Go to this email. And under insert, there's a screenshot tool that you can then do a screen clipping. It'll go back to the last screen you saw. Simply drag across whatever you'd like to put into your email or into Word, let go, and notice the formatting is absolutely perfect. Okay? So that's screen clipping. Another neat thing in this version, it used to be that when you opened up a second workbook in Excel, it would occupy this same screen, making it very difficult to 
copy things, let's say, from one workbook to another. But now, in this version, if I open up a second Excel book, go to this one. Opening up the second book, look what I can do. I can actually move this to this part of the screen and this to this part. And notice how I have complete access to all the toolbars, everything. They're in each in their own windows, making it so easy to highlight, copy, and paste from workbook to workbook. All right. Going back earlier, remember how um, I showed you to select a uh, current region? Uh, all we had to do was select, use the Select Current Region tool or press Control A. Sometimes you want to go to the end of a line and select simply by using your mouse. To do that, notice that I've got a border around this cell. If I double click, on any edge of the border, it's going to take me to the end of that range. So if I double click on the right hand border, notice it took me to the end. If I double click on the left hand border, it takes me to the beginning. If I double click on the bottom border, it takes me to the end of the range. Okay? Now if I want to select as I'm going, I just have to hold my shift key down when I double click and notice that it'll select to the end. I, again, can hold my shift key down, double click, and it selects to the bottom. So using that border to select is a really handy tool. All right. A lot of you have already know about something called the fill handle. The fill handle allows you to type in something like January, and then go to the bottom right-hand corner, this is called the fill handle, so your mouse should look like a plus. I drag it to the right, and it fills. Some people also know that if I drag my fill handle once it's filled to the left, it will erase. So dragging to the right fills, and dragging to the left erases. Okay? What if, though, what if you would like to create your own heading? For instance, let's say you have offices in um, Seattle and Bellevue and Issaquah. Uh, think of some more cities. Um, uh, my mind went blank. Bellingham. Okay. And Every time you create a sheet, or not every time, but quite frequently, you're typing in these same headings over and over and over again. And you would love to just be able to click on Seattle, drag across, and have it have Bellevue, Issaquah, and Bellingham. Well, you can. You can create your own what's called custom list. Simply by one way is you could type it in, and you could select the list. And the only difficulty about doing this yourself is finding out how to do it. And so on page 23, I have the directions that all you have to remember is go to File, because they hide it really well. Go to File, go to Options, go to Advanced, scroll all the way down, almost all the way down to the bottom, Notice where it says Edit Custom List. Click on that. Because I highlighted it, notice B46 through E46, because I highlighted it, I can now just click on Import. And notice it's added it to my list. Notice it's also showing me all the other ones I've added previously. Now, the rule here is you can only add um, a list that starts with something new. So I can't have one list that says Seattle, Bellevue, Issaquah, and another one saying uh, Seattle, and then some other city, Seattle, Tukwila, whatever, um, because it would get confused. It wouldn't know which one to use. So as long as you have a different starting um, 
name or whatever it is that you'd like in the first position, you're good to go. So one way is to import, which we just showed you. Even if I hadn't had this highlighted when I came in here, I can always now uh, click over and highlight and then do an import. Okay, so you don't have to have it highlighted first. I just did. You can also, if you don't have it in your sheet at all, you can click on Add. Excuse me, you can just come in here and add some new data, making sure it's one item on each line. So let's say I wanted to do um, something like pleading, enter, make sure you enter after every line. So pleadings, worksheets, whatever it is, and then click on add and it would take it from here and bring it over and you have a new list. If I want to add to the list now, all I have to do is click on the list, come over here, add something else, and add, and notice it added it. If I don't want this list anymore, I can click on it and press delete. And it's permanently deleted. So now, I just have to click on OK to get out. And now, no matter what worksheet I'm in, I can be in a completely new workbook, and I can just type in Seattle. And either drag the fill handle to the right or down, and notice that it didn't work. <laughs> okay, let's look at that again. That's kind of interesting. What it did was it just copied it instead of using my custom list. I thought I hit OK. Maybe I didn't. Let's make sure that I did hit OK. So I just highlight it. Again, I'm going to go to File, go to Options. Go to Advanced, scroll down, click on Edit Custom List. Ah, I somehow didn't get, I must not have clicked OK, I must have hit Cancel at this point. Note to self, do not do that. Click on OK and OK. Now it should work a lot better. Let's just click on one of these Seattle's, drag the fill handle. There we go. Notice that it's telling you what it's doing as it's going. So it'll keep going from uh, Seattle through Bellingham and start again. So you can put it in as many times as you want. But isn't that nicer than having to type these in every single time? So whether you're going across or whether you're going down, it's going to put in your Seattle, Bellevue, Issaquah, Bellingham, especially if I can get a hold of the handle on I'm really sorry my mouse is acting so strangely today, but it works just great as far as the custom list goes. Now, the other reason a custom list is really nice is let's say you wanted to sort. You know how when you sort, normally it'll sort either numerically or alphabetically, right? So what if I wanted to sort so all my Seattle's were together or all my Bellevue's were together and that sort of thing, but I wanted it in that order. I wanted Seattle, Bellevue, Issaquah, Bellingham. I did not want it to be Bellevue first, okay? A good example of that might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe I want it in that order. I don't want it necessarily A to Z. I want it in a special order that I create. By creating a custom list, you can actually use that custom list when sorting. So if I wanted to sort these, I could now go to sort and filter, and I could do a custom sort, and instead of just sorting A to Z, which is usually your option, right, if you go to options, then, excuse me, if I go to, where is my, here, here we go, I click on A to Z, click on custom list, scroll down, click on Seattle Bellevue, Click on OK, or I could do Monday, Tuesday, or I could do high, medium, low, all of those things that you might not want to be in alphabetical order. And notice it says this is going to be my sort order. So I click on OK, and notice that instead of putting Bellevue first, uh, and then Bellingham, that sort of thing, it did Seattle, Bellevue, Issaquah, Bellingham, exactly the way I wanted. So to be able to sort in the order you want versus sorting in just a plain A to Z kind of sequence is another benefit of these custom lists, okay? Move and copy. 
These are techniques that you might already know, but a lot of people do move and copy very slowly. So I just want to teach you some neat tools if you didn't already know them. If I want to move, let's say I'd like to move my nut row in between my ice cream and cherries, what a lot of people would do is they would potentially insert a row between um, ice cream and cherries and then move nuts and then delete the row where nuts came from, all of that. Another way of doing it, notice there's a border along the side of nuts. If I hold my shift key down as I drag that border, notice that I have this line that appears. That line says it's going to move, now that it's between ice cream and cherries, it's going to move nuts right in between ice cream and cherries. So instead of inserting a row, deleting a row, all of that, all I did was I held my shift key down, dragged a border to where I wanted it to go, let go, and it was in place of copying and pasting or inserting or any of those things. Okay? Dragging and dropping is an amazing way to move and copy things if you're not going very far. So, for instance, if I wanted to copy this, I could highlight it, and if I just drag it, it's going to move it. You need to make sure that you're on a border, point to the border, drag, and it's going to move it. Okay? If, though, I want to copy it, I can still drag, but what I want to do before I let go is I want to hold my control key down. Notice that when I do, next to my arrow, there's a little plus. As long as my control key is down, when I let go of my mouse, notice that now I have two copies. Okay? Okay. Have you ever wanted to have four of the same looking sheets? I'm going to open up a new uh, workbook, and I'm going to put in four sheets, okay? And let's say I would like to have the same thing on each of those, at least to start with. I'm going to type in January here. And by the way, to change the name, I'm just double-clicking on the sheet. Whoa. Okay. So I could either create each sheet at a time, which would be a long process, or instead I can group these sheets so that I can enter data into them all at once. To group sheets, all I have to do is click on the first and shift click on the last sheet that I want. Now, if I type in, let's say, January, and drag my fill handle. And just because I used it a second ago, I'm going to type in Seattle and drag my fill handle. Notice that instead of only being on the first sheet and me having to copy it to the second and third, notice that all the sheets, it's like putting carbon paper between the sheets. It's on every single one of them. Now also notice that I just ungrouped the sheets by clicking on them individually. So I'm going to, once again, group the sheets. And you know they're grouped also because up here it says group. So now I would like to add the word total in this spot and this spot. So I'm going to control click to put it in both areas, type in my word total. And does anybody remember what I need to do in order to get the word total in both spots at the same time? Instead of pressing enter, remember I need to press control enter. Boom both spots at the same time. Now, I'm going to drag across this and hold my control key to drag across this to bold both of those at the same time. But now what I'd like to do is I would like to put in totals. The problem is, with no data in here, 
I can't automatically put in totals. So what I'm going to do, do you remember, if I want to just put in some fake data, I'm going to select the entire area that I would normally put data in. And I'm just going to put in what I call dummy data by typing in a number and pressing control enter. By doing that, I put my data everywhere and now I can select by just shift clicking one more row and one more column and click on my thumb tool. Notice that now I've got totals in here. Well, I no longer need or want my dummy data, so I'm just going to shift click back one and press delete. I have just in second created a January, a February, a March, an April spreadsheet with all of the headings, all of the totals ready to go all at once by grouping my sheets. Now the problem is what I forgot was I would like to have a first quarter sheet. I would like to add all of these and make another sheet. And I don't want to do it again. Well, what some people would do is they would copy and paste this to a new sheet. Have you ever done that and found that when you copy and paste your row heading, uh, your column width and your row height are not what you want them to be? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this data, I'm going to select the current region, going to press copy, going to open up a new book, and going to paste. Do you notice how the column widths aren't correct, the row heights aren't correct? Now, some of you may know that if I go to my paste tool, that there is a neat tool that it is, says Keep source column width. By doing that, at least my column widths are correct. But I don't know if you remember, but my row heights were different, and they aren't correct. So rather than copying and pasting and having to deal with all of those formatting issues, if I just copy the worksheet instead, you will have no formatting issues. Now, what a lot of people do to copy a sheet is they will right-click on the sheet, they will go to Move or Copy, Create a Copy, and click OK. There is nothing wrong with that, but if you remember that the Control key is your Copy key, if I take my sheet, drag it with my Control key down, notice there's a little plus in this little sheet that I'm dragging, let go, Notice it made an exact duplicate of my sheet, and now all I have to do is type in the new name. So whether you group your sheets or whether you copy your sheets, both of which are so much faster than doing it any other way and so much more accurate, okay? So grouping sheets is on page 33. Now, I do have some functions on page pages 34, 35, 36, but because we're going to, because next month we are going to cover um, those things, I think I'm going to skip that and go on to the next topic, which is flash fill on page 39. To do flash Fill, I'm going to find my flash fill sheet. Hopefully it's in here. Let me know if you well, this will be good. Okay, so flash fill is new in I believe 2013 it came out. Um, and there are times that you want to take data like Joe Jones, and you would like Joe to be in one column and Jones to be in the column to the right of that. Um, actually, the other way, let me see here. Yeah, let me, let me do that the other way around. I want Sandy, Sandy Eileen Rylander, let's say, to be over here. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna start typing Sandy Eileen 
Rylander and Nicholas. Notice that the second I start typing Nicholas, it says, oh, it looks like what you're trying to do is take these columns to the left and bring them together. It's called concatenating or bringing together. And that's what Flash Fill does. Notice it's also showing you a preview of what it's going to do to the rest. So simply by typing in the first one and starting to type the second one, all I have to do is then press enter and it flash filled it all the way down. You used to have to do a concatenate, but now, and you still can, but flash fill will do it for you as well. Okay? There is a, um, a little tip on page 39. It says important. Be careful that numbers that have leading zeros, flash fill will only retain those leading zeros if you first format the column that it's going to fill into as text, okay? Okay, finding special on page 41. Let me, okay. Find special is another neat thing that's under go to. Go to, you can either, uh, or go to special, excuse me. Um, go to is an easy thing to get to just by pressing control G. And then click on special. Actually, before I, oh, I'm in the, I'm in the range that I want to be in, and then I'm going to go to go to special. What I like about go to special is it allows you to do things like, say, could you please show me my formulas? And click on OK, and do you see how now it's highlighted everything that is a formula? So if you want to know, let's say somebody typed the number in here, which has happened several times with some of my clients. If I go, again, I press Control-G, Special, go to Formulas, and click on OK, do you see how it immediately highlights where somebody typed over my formula. It's such a neat way to quickly find things to either go to formulas or go to blank cells or all of these different things. Go to visible cells. This go to visible cells is actually something that I've added to my quick access toolbar. Let me tell you what go to visible cells does. Have you ever taken a column and right clicked and hidden it? Or uh, let's say I let's say I don't want any of this. So I drag across all of those columns, right click, and I say hide. Okay? Or I may just hide some. That that's actually let me uh, undo that because I want to do everything except the total. Okay, I'm gonna hide everything except the total. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to send you just this information. So I copy it, go to a new workbook, and I paste it, and it's like, oh, I went to all that trouble of hiding it, and it didn't really do that, right? And that's because those columns are really still there, and when you went to select, you selected everything just by going, by doing that, okay? So instead, I'm going to select it still the same way. But now I'm going to go to visible. So press go to, and you can add it to your toolbar, like I said. Go to special and visible cells only. Click on OK. Do you see how this is actually white in here, trying to show you that all I'm selecting is this and separately this? So now if I do a copy, notice also I've got two sets of marquees going around the data also a visual clue. And when I come to my new sheet, notice that what I'm seeing is only those visible cells. Select visible is an amazing feature that will really help you if you ever hide cells and don't want somebody to see it when you go to a new sheet. Okay? Okay. If you have a sheet here. Um, let me unhide by coming here 
and unhide those same columns. Um, we're going to look at something called named ranges. A lot of people don't know named ranges exist. And it's so easy, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, it's so easy to create a named range. What is a named range? Well, let's say I would like to highlight this because this is, this is my, I'm going to use my select here. Um, this is my Baskin Robbins in Bellevue, let's say. So I'm going to select this range. And remember, this is called the name box. To name a range, one easy way to do it is just click in the name box, first select the range, click in the name box, and I'm going to type in Bellevue and hit enter. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to select the range, and let's say this is Seattle. Now, if I have a large sheet, and I have a lot of these, if I want to go to Bellevue, I can just click on the down arrow here, click on Bellevue, and boom, or Seattle. Click on Seattle, and boom. This is great if, let's say I want to either go there or I want to print it. So now I can say um, print selection, and it's a way, because you know you can only have one print range. So this way, you kind of, sort of, have a print range just by printing selection. So these named ranges are great. Another thing a named range is good for is, Let's say you have a tax rate, and normally what I would tell people is type tax up here, type your tax rate up here, which might be 9.5%, and then if you're trying to calculate the tax, what you would do is you would do equals, you take the total, right, and you'd multiply it by the tax. Now, when you do that, you need to make sure that it's always referring to this cell. So I'm going to make this Q1, I'm going to make it absolute by pressing my F4 key. Notice pressing my F4 key puts dollar signs around the Q and the 1. That makes it so when I fill this formula to the right, it won't make it from Q1 to R1 to S1. It'll always point to Q1, okay? Otherwise, I, I won't have the correct data. I drag this across now, and it works beautifully, right? But if, I, if anybody accidentally deletes this because they don't see it or whatever, then I have a problem, right, because everything goes to zero. So you can use it. It works just fine. But I also have to make sure that I absolute it to make sure it doesn't go to R1, all of those things. Let's try a different method. Let's define a named range. A named range doesn't actually have to be in your, uh, in your spreadsheet. You can just go to these named ranges. So the name manager is in under formulas. Notice here, okay? But I can also define a name just by clicking on define name here. And it named it tax just because that's where I was, but I can name it anything I want. And instead of having it point to a cell, I can say my tax is going to be 0 0.095. So what I'm doing is I'm naming an amount, uh, a, a name of tax, okay? Click on OK. And now I can say my formula can be equal this times tax. And notice as I'm typing in tax, it actually even shows up on my pop-up, okay? Then I can drag this across. And it's really nice because I don't have to worry about these cells getting deleted. I have that tax rate in here. It's also very visible that it's called tax up here. And anytime I want to change tax, I can go to my name manager. I can come here to tax. If my tax is now 10%, I can take away this 0.95 and make it 0.01 and enter it. Close and notice immediately everything in there changed. So using names, named ranges and names is a very time saving tool and a handy tool because you can actually read the range names, go to places quickly, and there's a ton more things you can do with range names as well.
And I think this is a good place to, uh, to stop. There are more things in your handout, as I said earlier. Um, not much, though. We covered almost everything for any questions. I definitely also wanted to let people know that um, I just dropped in the chat um, the Excel formulas and functions um, advanced session that is coming up that Sandy is putting forward. It is on May 10th, same time. Anybody have any questions? Because if not, I do, since there is only, well, there are two other topics, but I really would love to do one last one, which is called data subtotaling or subtotals. Let me see if I have a, here we go. Data subtotals is so handy, and a lot of people don't know about it. And so a lot of people do pivot tables, which are great, tremendously time-saving function. But data subtotals is a lesser-known, incredibly useful, incredibly easy-to-use tool. Let's say, so I've got this spreadsheet that's just in a list form. I've got date, account name, invoice, amount, that sort of thing. And now I want to see... Um, maybe I'm at the end of the quarter and I want to see by account how much was billed to each account uh, this in this year or however much I've got here. What I can do, instead of trying to figure out a way to do it myself, all I have to do is sort by account. If that's what I'm trying to do is see by account, I would sort by account. So I would click in the account space and I would click A to Z to sort. Okay, now I've got it sorted by account. After that, um, getting subtotals, you would go to the data tab, and you would go to subtotals, which is over here, data subtotal. And all I have to do is say for each change in, and we had decided it was going to be by account, and then what do I want to do? Do I want to add count, average? I want to add. And I want to add quarters. I want to add amounts, right? Click on OK. And in two seconds, I've got all my subtotals. Now, maybe I just want to see the subtotals. Then I can click on the number two, and it only shows me the subtotals. Or number three will show me everything, and number one will show me only the grand total. So data subtotaling is such a handy tool and I can subtotal by absolutely anything. If I want to get rid of the subtotals, I can click on subtotal again and remove all. And I can subtotal by something else, like maybe I want to subtotal by quarter. Well, if I want to subtotal by quarter, click on the A to Z, got my one through four here, and, and I go to subtotal. And this time, instead of by account, I'm going to go by quarter. And I still want to subtotal the amount, click on OK. And maybe I only want to see the subtotals, click on two. I see my subtotals per quarter. Such a cool little tool called data subtotal. Okay, now I'm going to be open for questions. Does anybody have any questions? We have about uh, 10 minutes or so for questions, five, 10 minutes. It can be on anything Excel related. No questions on anything we covered or anything that you find cumbersome? Because if in Excel you find anything at all cumbersome, there's a faster so how, way. How do you add a formula to the top navigation bar, like a particular formula? Not 100% sure that I understand the question. Add a formula to the top navigation bar. What are you considering the top navigation bar? Are you considering it the formula bar? I'm not sure exactly. My guess is the, the formula bar that you've got there has some specific formulas there. Is there a way to edit those? Which ones show up? The formula bar? Are you talking about the quick access toolbar? Or the, this is the formula bar right here. Right here. Okay, so the quick access toolbar has the particular quick. formulas on it, correct? 
And it has particular commands on it, not formulas. It, I did put in um, these multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, friends, that sort of thing on here so that if I want to point and make a formula, so let's say I want to say equals uh, this plus that minus this, it means that I can stay on my mouse the whole time without having to use the keyboard at all. So I don't know if that's what she's talking about, but formulas in and of themselves, unless she's talking about functions, maybe she's talking about functions or he, um, to have different functions, like sum, average, max, min, that sort of thing. Um, if so, uh, I put this on there. The, the sum now has these, and you can click on more functions to go to more functions. Is that, that might be what they're asking, not formulas, but functions? Is that true? I'm not sure. Um, okay. So, how, um, I mean, so another restatement is how to add formula to an entire column, or this is another question, which is how to add a formula to an entire column without dragging. And oh, thank you. only to range of rows or content, not the entire sheet. Yeah, so thank you for asking. I believe that is one of my tips in my handout that I uh, obviously glanced past. Uh, so thank you for asking that question. So this would be uh, what you're talking about, if I can not. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to delete those. So I put my formula in here, and now I'd like to have it go down the column. All I have to do is come over to my... Uh, fill handle, and instead of dragging that, just double click and it will bring it down as far as the column to the left of it. So it won't do it further than the column to the left. Okay, so all I did was come to the um, fill handle and double click. Any other questions? I've got another one here, just for one second. Yeah. Um, how do you get uh, to the bottom of the page uh, quickly without having to scroll? Yeah, great question. That actually we um, we covered under the navigation, which if you, um, there's different ways. One that I really like because people seem to like mice um, or the mouse, I should say. Let me go to a little larger, like the um, freeze panes. Here we go. So if I want to get to the bottom, and you've probably done this accidentally, certainly I have, is if you double click on that bottom uh, border and double click, that will immediately bring you to the first blank um, cell. So assuming you don't have blank rows in between, you're good to go. If I double click on the top border, it brings me back to the top, except then I clicked again. So that would be a mouse way of doing it. But if you want to do it a keyboard way of doing it, holding your control key down and hitting your down arrow will bring you to the last of the um, the bottom row. Control right arrow. So control and any of the arrow keys bring you to every part of your spreadsheet of the filled data. So on uh, the worksheet where you entered the months by grouping for all sheets, if you want to make that a total page for all months, how do you do that? Um, are you asking when I did January, February, March, how, how do I total it, make a consolidate? Um, yes. A first quarter. Um, that would be the consolidate function. And I don't know if we quite have the time for that, but um, let's try. Um, let's see if I can find my consolidate. Here we go. So what I had was, okay, so what I did here, here's a, just so that we already have the numbers put in, I have a first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, instead of a January, February, and I have a yearly total. So the first thing you want to do, and this is really a, a, a topic in and of itself, so um, but anyway, um, so we're, it's going to be a little quick. But so the first thing you want to do is make an exact duplicate of 
uh, of the spreadsheet that you have the data in. So again, if you hold your control key and drag, you know, and, and then take out the data, make a yearly totals one, okay? And then once you have it, assuming that you have the same labels going down the uh, left and the top so that everything that it's bringing in is in the same position, then you can just go to the consolidate, which is under data. So I highlight what I want to bring in. You don't want to bring in the totals. That will automatically happen. Highlight the data. Click on consolidate. You want to sum. Then you want to come in here for reference. Okay. You want to go to the first one or whichever one you want to actually bring in. So I'm going to click on first quarter. And I'm going to select the data that I want to add. Click on Add, going to go to the second quarter, and it's already got it highlighted for me. How cool is that? Click on Add, go to third quarter, click on Add. Now, oh, excuse me, got fourth quarter, click on fourth quarter, click on Add. And so remember, I started in yearly totals, highlighted where I wanted the totals to go, and then went to each of those sheets, and then all I have to do at this point is click on OK. Now, before I click on OK, I want to show you uh, a couple other things. If everything wasn't in the same place, maybe one year you didn't have cherries, maybe uh, you had something else, whatever it is, then you're going to have to use the labels. So if you have extra or less um, rows or columns, you want to make sure if you have less rows, you're going to want to use the left column. If you have, you know, different things across the top, you're going to want to use top row. But what it does is to match up the numbers in the right place from sheet to sheet. If it can't count on them always being in the same place, it then looks at it matches up all the Bellevue's or it matches up all the ice creams or whatever to make sure it's right. So these are important only if your data isn't in the same place. And then if I now click on OK, it's going to give me totals of everything, but if I ever change any of these, it won't be reflected in the yearly totals. If I want it to change, I would have to say create links, which would mean if I then change this data, it would change yearly totals. So it really depends on what you want to do. Um, sometimes people don't want them to change because it's the end of the year. No matter what happens, they're not, they don't want it to change. So I'm going to just leave it like this, click on OK. And boom, notice it brought in all the totals, and all of these are now correct. So I want to thank you guys for coming. That is the consolidate, data consolidate command. You can find out a lot more by telling me what to do, um, but we quickly went over it just so that you know it's there. It's, you know, there's so many amazing features like that that will save you so much time. I want to thank you and hope you come to the formulas because formulas will save you a ton of time. Even if you say, but Sandy, I never add, I never subtract, I never do anything like that. Well, maybe not, but maybe what you're doing is you want to compare. You know, um, does this column compare correctly with this column? Or how do I bring these this data together or separate it or whatever? There will be functions that you will learn about that will help you with data just as much as there are functions that will help you with numbers. So I hope to see you next month, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you so much, Sandy. Greatly appreciate it.